This is the Kibo robot. As you can see, the surface is wood, the edges are soft plastic. We wanted Kibo to look not primarily like a technological device, but we also made the bottom clear in order to demystify the technology and invite children into the engineering side of Kibo. Similarly, we made the parts of Kibo very easy for children to attach and work with. So attaching the wheels and motors is something that children can do when they want to give Kibo the ability to move. Each of the capabilities of the robot come from the parts the children attach. And similarly, Kibo doesn't look like anything to begin with. It doesn't look like a character or an animal or a particular vehicle. We want Kibo to be an open platform that children project their imagination onto and which they build onto with craft materials and other um, parts. So now that I've given Kibo wheels and motors, Kibo is able to move. I give instructions to Kibo uh, with coding or computer programming. With Kibo, which is entirely screen free, children program the robot using physical wooden blocks. Each block represents one command for the robot. Just like a story, a Kibo program needs a beginning and an ending. And in between, the blocks that I put in sequence are the story that the robot will follow, the program that I'm giving it. Just like we read these words or recognize these pictures, Kibo is going to read these words. The barcodes are Kibo's language and it's how we'll teach our story to Kibo. Each robot has a barcode scanner built into the front, which the children use to load their program into the robot. So I wake Kibo up, and then I scan each block in sequence. The program that I've given Kibo is just to spin. I run the program by pressing this button. So that was a program that just asked Kibo to move. We can give Kibo other capabilities by adding additional parts. So for example, Kibo has a light bulb that the children can turn on red, white, or blue. They attach the part to the robot in any of these sockets. Sturdy parts, easy for children to manipulate, and easy for them to attach. This way they participate in the engineering and building of the robot giving it capabilities to run the programs that they design. In addition to parts like the light bulb, Kibo also has sensors. These work like our human senses and give the robot the ability to respond to sound or light or distance to allow ro uh, the robot to change its behavior based on things that happen in the environment. So the, now I've given Kibo both a light bulb and a sound sensor. So I'm going to create a new program that makes use of those. First, I'll ask Kibo to turn its light on. Then I'll ask Kibo to wait for a clapping sound. And then we'll use the spin that we had before. So again, a beginning and an ending, and then steps in between in sequence that represent the story that Kibo will follow. So I'll scan this new program, and then I'll run it. So the light bulb will come on, then it's waiting for a clapping sound, and then spin. So Kibo followed along with the sequence that we created based on the parts that we decided to add to the robot. So in addition to the sensors and light bulb that you saw there, Kibo also has a, the sound recording module, which allows children to include their voice or other sounds in the program. Uh, we have different attachments that support different kinds of exploration and learning with Kibo. We also have more sophisticated coding concepts kids can explore, like repeat loops and conditional behavior. And then probably most fun, we have uh, different art platforms that children can add to the robot. So for example, this build, wooden building platform lets kids build onto the robot with craft materials and art supplies. So for example, in a unit about their community, they might turn Kibo into a school bus and program it to explore the neighborhood. Or in a literacy unit, 
uh, children might decorate their robot to be a character in a story that the class is reading, and then program Kibo to act out a scene using that character. So these parts and these um, coding concepts combine in order to allow children to express their interests and investigate all kinds of cross-curricular uh, applications, combining that with coding, which we feel is sort of the essence of STEAM education in early childhood. So I'll switch back to the slides now to continue the conversation.